pop it, pop it, pop it, pop, 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 pop. pop, pop. Uh, uh, That's how I know you're in fight camp. It doesn't move. Aw. Ah. Maybe this angle. <laughs> I need to get on that fucking McKenzie Dern diet. <laughs> like, what do you feed that thing? Everything. Because I know you're working. <laughs> you can tell she's working, but oh, yeah. that thing stays there. It doesn't it's go away. Genetics. It's yeah. the Brazilian in her. <laughs> the Brazilian. It's not just the accent. It's also the butt. No, it's not the accent. The accent isn't real, but that ass is. That accent was all over the place. Uh, <laughs> yeah, night. it's it's constantly evolving, much like her fight game. It, it must have been from being in Abu Dhabi. I think every time she goes somewhere, she acquires a bit of accent. A little bit. Yeah, yeah like they they make her fight in Texas. She'll come back saying y'all. They make <laughs> her fight in in China. She'll be saying some I don't know niho whatever. <laughs> I don't know any Chinese, but. I feel like it's gonna cross over anytime she goes somewhere. Mm. It's like a it's like a disease. She just like catches it, catches the bug anytime she has a new accent. She just takes the the parts that she likes of it. Yeah. Little uh modge podge. Yeah, that's things. Fun. Yeah. A little art and craft. Keep it keep it new and fresh. Yeah. Yeah, why, why not? not? Um, uh, we were just talking about uh that other fight that happened on the prelim, Cedriquez. And he said in his post-fight speech that he doesn't hit women. Thank God. Yeah. Thank you for Dude, not hitting women. I'm so happy you're not on the list of UFC fighters that hit women that are still active. Yeah, because there is that's a real list. <laughs> yeah, that are still in the UFC. I'm glad he's not on it. Ah, uh, yes. It's, it's really refreshing. We got to win. <laughs> we got to win with that one. <laughs> Thank you. This week. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it, and it's always weird when stuff like that happens because, you know, there's two sides of a story. And the more someone protests, the more you're like, oh, maybe there is some truth in that. But, uh, man, it's it's a tough one. It's a really tough thing to navigate. And usually the company is just like, oh, this is too messy for us. And right. they... <laughs> they get rid of the person. See you later. Yeah, yeah, that's happened before. Unless you're, you know, McGregor or Jones, <laughs> then you know, <laughs> you guys can stay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll deal with all the mess. We'll we'll get rid of those <laughs> harmful women. <laughs> those <laughs> those annoying women <laughs> for you. <laughs> Everyone else <laughs> can go. Yeah, so uh, we had a lot of fun stuff going on. But first, uh, let's talk about PFL weekend. I was gone for the week. Being mean? Uh, I was not mean. All right, so I was gone for the week, cornering uh, our girl Jenna Bishop. Our jiu-jitsu coach was um, off doing Brazilian things, so I was there as a fill-in. But she was fighting a Muay Thai fighter, so it was still a good a good corner for that fight. And um, you know, we were we were very respectful. Every time I saw Jenna do an interview talking about her opponent, very respectful, very uh, very humble in her approach. She believed in. She would say things that made it sound like, okay, I believe in myself. I'm not too worried about what she's gonna do. She seems strong. Those kind of lines. You know, there was no shit talk on the come up of that fight from what I saw. The only time that I or anyone else of her, of Jenna's friend group was upset was towards PFL for the matchmaking that they did yes. for the fight beforehand for the Chelsea Hackett fight. Chelsea had just lost to Jenna Bishop and then everyone else in the second string of fights had to fight someone who was at the top of the points list Aside from uh, Dakota, mm -hmm. who got to fight someone who got finished in the first round. And that's where I guess she was talking about when she said, oh, uh, the mean girls, I got to shut up the mean girls or whatever. I don't I didn't hear it. <laughs> but people told me about it. I yeah. still have to go back and watch it. But I've gotten multiple just like messages, even a guy on the in the elevator afterwards, he's like, oh, you're going to fight Dakota next? <laughs> what did you do to her? And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> I honestly have no idea what I did. Unless she watches Two Straws, <laughs> I have kept her name out of my mouth. It's only the only time I mentioned her was when the matchmaking was very unfair in the first, uh, I guess, the PFL season when they're deciding who's going to be in the top of the uh, million dollar tournament, mm -hmm. which was all of their last fights. 
Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Because I think, um, I know I chimed in, you chimed in. I think a few people chimed in specifically at the PFL for just asking a question, mm. not even being mean, just pointing a question or asking a question as to how somebody can be in a tournament fighting people who have lost. Yeah. And now, again, she just beat Jenna and she's going to fight for a million dollars fighting somebody who was on a losing side of the bracket. It just, my question is, how does this happen? Yeah, I don't exactly. think there's anything mean about that. There's nothing mean. It's stating facts. It's uh, calling out the promotion more than anything because if you listen to what she says, she says she doesn't pick her fights. So it's PFL setting her up for success and good for her because most people don't get that don't get that luxury this is something that we normally see on like a, a local circuit mm -hmm. before you get you know to the to the bigger show to the bigger show and it's so that it, it's just kind of confusing to me <laughs> it is because they're kind of acting like a lower level show yes in the fact that they are clearly giving somebody a leg up a leg up Mm -hmm. um and you even saw a bias and they don't do this for anybody else and this is not a slight on her this is not talking crap it's about the organization um just showing a lot of favoritism which i understand she's their their european champion but they don't show any kind of favoritism to liz and promoting her because she's the bellator champion mm -hmm. in the tournament and even in the build-up when i was watching the fight at home it was promoting her and then crickets literally like no, like nothing was happening to promote Jenna, her opponent and it or the main event or the main event, anything like that. It was, it was just about her. And I mean, Hey, hats off to her. That's an awesome position to be in when you have an organization that's got your back like that and promoting you like that. That's absolutely amazing. But, um, as, as an athlete and a, and a fan and a viewer, I just have questions about that. Exactly. And if you are in that position, it's very obvious that you're going to have people who have issues with that. It's going to happen. It happens to everyone who gets pushed in the UFC, who seems to get a lot more media attention, who gets more uh, interviews. Look at Egan Gary. Look at Patty Pimlet. If you're talking about the UK scene, look at Molly McCann. They get a lot of hate more than most people coming up because of all the attention on mm -hmm. them. The attention that Dakota gets from PFL is like a combined effort of all three of those people I just mentioned and how they get pushed in the UFC. They are fully 100%, all their eggs are in that Dakota basket. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the people who train with Jenna are going to be rooting for her to upset their plans. And I don't, I, I guess it's maybe an immaturity thing or maybe it's just, you know, this is what you have to do in order to step in there. You have to create enemies. You have to create the storyline where everyone's against you, everyone hates you, and you're going to prove them all wrong. So apparently in the corner, I got shushed. <laughs> oh, did you? I didn't see it. <laughs> I was looking at the corners and I was trying to get a better view of where Jenna was because I was just behind the panel. And... Because I wasn't looking at her, she turned around and shushed me again. Oh, I missed I, that one I too. Double shushed. Yeah, I got double shushed, probably because I was still talking. <laughs> 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 and then, um, and then uh, I was told about the Mean Girls thing in in the uh, post fight speech. So. After all this happened, uh, we're back at the hotel. I'm getting drinks for, for, you know, Jenna. So I'm heading upstairs. And as I'm going upstairs, there were a lot of small hallways. And this kind of happened the entire week. It was an, an, an annoying hotel to have a fight weekend because you're literally in these maybe five-foot wide hallways constantly walking past either your opponent or that's their fun. corner or you know it's just <laughs> that's not awkward at all i don't know i'm used to i guess wider hotels 
<laughs> but there was a lot of moments. There were only a few places to go in this hotel, and there were a lot of moments where we were walking past their corner. So for me, the easiest thing to do is to just say hi, you know, just smile or nod or something, just so it's not, like, super awkward. You're not, like, ugh, walking around like you're blind. And every time I walk past her or her corner, I'd just be like, and her brother would like nod back or or you know make make eye contact or whatever and she's here so after fight night after the mean girl stuff and the fight and everything i'm walking up this narrow flight of stairs she's walking down and i go hey i'm not mean <laughs> <laughs> And she rolls her eyes and keeps walking. And all of her corner just kind of does the same thing, looks straight ahead. So I'm like, all right, well, I tried. <laughs> you did. I tried. I tried to address the situation, and it didn't happen. So it is what it is. But Jenna Jenna fought a really good fight in the first half of that first round. Um, she was doing everything she needed to do, but Dakota did a good job of getting up, getting back to her feet. And I felt like Jenna kind of rushed on that takedown again. She was mm -hmm. trying to get it back to where she was comfortable. And was just Dakota was just able to get that plum and, no, it was and get really, the knee in there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was impressive. It was impressive technically. She fought a really smart fight. She showed growth against, you know, a very dangerous grappler. Mm -hmm. So hats off to her. And, you know, I just I invite the question or, or the statement that I'm sure if she was in an opposite position, I'm sure she would have feelings that we did and question oh of as certainly. well you know could you imagine just saying, just could saying. you imagine <laughs> just saying. yeah imagine how many people were on jenna in jenna's mentions were in the comments section of everything saying that she was going to get knocked out you know it's really hard to walk into a situation like that and we were talking earlier about how it's how it can be hard as well when you're a huge favorite, you have all this pressure on you to perform. It's it's also hard in a different sense, but at least you're going in there with this, whether it's made up or not, with this confidence that everyone is behind you and everyone believes that you're going to win. It's a different type of hard when everyone thinks that you're going to lose. Yeah, And uh, she, she did a great job from you know, from getting that big takedown off of the knee. I think it's just, you know, both fighters are still growing. Both fighters are still pretty fresh in the game. Jenna started uh, doing MMA, I think, 2021 or 2022. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're both learning, and it was a fair matchup for both of them at this point of their careers. What we were upset about was the matchup of someone who – had already lost in the previous round of the tournament. So PFL is known for doing that stuff. Like they've they've done it before with the other weight classes. I think it's just because there's more recognizable names in this straw or in this flyweight tournament, it made it a lot more obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hats off to you, Dakota. I'm not being mean. I'm congratulating you. You did a great job. Nice knees. And uh yeah, you know, quit being a little bitch. <laughs> I could be mean. I could totally be mean. And she'll win. Yeah. I love that green dress you were wearing. Oh, stop it. <laughs> She's a fashionista. Stop it. Her dress uh, looked like our screen back here. Oh. <laughs> you know, not everybody can pull off that color. No, no. We should get her on the show. Then you'd see right through her. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> you're, you're digressing. I, uh. I mean, I'm not mean. <laughs> I'm not mean. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just frustrating. And, you know, when it comes to skill sets, uh, that's something that I'm really used to dealing with, someone who's lanky and tall and has good clinch. And, um, yeah, it's just uh, you, you got to wonder how she's going to look against Talia, who is able to handle that type of attack. But she's been looking a little more vulnerable lately. You know what? I, I kind of kind of questioned some things in this last fight when Talia yeah. was fighting Liz. I, I did think she won. Some people thought that Liz won. It was close. They, it I was, was only able to fight. see um, like maybe two quarters of it, but it looked like a close fight. Yeah, I just, um, you know, Liz is, is a very physically strong opponent and Talia definitely neutralized that strength at certain points, but not the whole time. Mm. 
so I, I did think that Talia won. I thought she outscored her. I thought she got, you know, the, the good control positions, mm-hmm. control time. But she seemed just a little bit flat compared yeah. to how I've seen her previously. I'm not sure what that was about. Maybe she was sick, had a bad weight cut. Maybe it was just Liz taking her out of her game. Mm. Who knows what it was. But um, I am excited about that future matchup with Dakota and Talia. Yeah, I think she was a little surprised about the approach. You know, Liz going for heavy for the takedowns and getting them. Those takedowns are looking good. She was able to hit the double, get that knee behind, and like really like take her off of her feet. That was something that I didn't see from Liz in her last fight and that I didn't really expect her to come forward like that. And I didn't expect it to work on uh, Talia, who's a pretty solid grappler as well. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how that fight's going to look. It, 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 it's another one where it could go either way. You, she can uh, Dakota can prove that she has developed enough to the fact to the point where her skills, her strengths are gonna beat everyone, or she might show some holes in a game. Talia might be able to wade the storm, get in, get to a good position, beat her, or be good with her on the feet, take her down, and really make her work. And mm-hmm. I think that's what most people expect to happen, but. This girl, she she has some knockout power. Mm-hmm. She definitely has like a lot of drill ability with her knees. You can't do the wrong things against her because she's gonna make you pay. And she doesn't have that, uh, I guess, that tentativeness that a lot of strikers have when they finally lose, when they finally aren't able to knock someone out, when they get taken down multiple times and it's because they're throwing big, because they're throwing kicks or knees and those are getting catched and caught and making them get taken down and lose rounds. Mm-hmm. And I think she's kind of thriving because she hasn't felt that yet. Yeah, She's still not, uh, you know, downing her abilities yet. And that's something that comes when you get to the higher levels and people are able to contend with your strengths. Mm -hmm. Well, she's definitely in a good spot. She's at top team and I know that they're working on it. I know that she's probably being, you know, put through it. And that's why we saw, you know, fast improvements and and growth and her handling those takedown um, defenses and get ups in this last fight pretty well. Mm. So we'll see how she shows up. I'm excited for this fight. Definitely. I'll be tuning in to watch. I'm, you know, Want to see how the story ends? Yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely a Talia fan. <laughs> I would have been a Dakota fan if she wasn't such a. Uh, see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you are not joined and subscribed, that's when you'll be seeing this. <laughs> nice, good one. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. You'll be seeing it in Dakota time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, speaking of people getting spicy, uh, did you see Bilal going after Usman on Twitter? I did. Dude. And I still I still want to know if it was him or if somebody else tweeted that for her. I think it was him. Yeah. It sounds like his level of pettiness. And, uh, you know, there was no cussing in there. So I'm like, okay, maybe Bilal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no mention of drinking alcohol. Uh, yeah, it was it was a really funny clap back. He did a whole series of them. Yeah. Yeah, I got I to gotta pull them up because I want people to feel I what like I felt. I the fingerprints one. The finger, yes. So, okay. Usman was making fun of Bilal. And I don't even think, the thing that makes me sad about it, I don't even think Usman was trying to get bodied like that. I think he just thought it was funny that Islam Makashev was teaching Bilal how to hold the belt. It was a cute little video. UFC reposted it and stuff. And so Usman quote tweeted and was like, oh, that's so cute that he's teaching you how to hold the belt. And... (laughs) And then Bilal decided, oh, I'm going to murder this guy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, aren't you all under the same management? Yeah, right? Aren't you guys like friends? Okay. Alternate theory. That was just Ali. (gasps) Doing both. Ooh, stirring the pot. That's what it probably was. like, I need my boys to make me money. Yes. On both sides. Ali was on his multiple Twitter accounts, as he does, tweeting Things that Usman said just because he had already thought of the perfect clap back for Bilal. Yeah. That's probably what happened. Dang. Now I feel bad. And now I'm like mad that I got had. 
by the no, whole situation. No, it's still good. It's still we good. We can still pretend. We can still pretend. All right, so it's real. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Bilal goes, yeah, he also taught me how to clean your fingerprints off the belt, which is just like, oh, my God, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> It was like a bunch of fights ago, but still. And then Usman comes back. I forget what he said, but then Bilal says something else. What What did he say? Do you remember? Mm-mm, I don't remember, but I would love to find it. Yeah, I should have had this queued up before I started talking about it. But I just thought it was good for him uh, because it's showing a little personality. Uh these are the things that champions need to do when you don't have a huge following, when you don't have like people signing up just because you fight well. You got to show a little personality on the side too. So let's see. Okay, so oh, you got it. Bilal said he also taught me how to clean your fingerprints off it, mm. and then Kamaro said, "Whose blueprint did you copy to help you win that fight?" Yes, Damn, at least say thank you. Ooh, okay. And then Bilal goes, lol, I did what you couldn't do. I finished the job. I'll send you Bully's Blueprint PDF. Just enter your email and credit card information. Damn. Not only did he clap back, he tried to scam him. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, it was really bad. He, he also said something about uh Something about Bilal being slow and kind of weak. And then Bilal clapped back and he was like, your th- performance in the third fight with Leon was slow and kind of weak too. I was just like, yo, give him a break. And also, Usman, put the phone put, down. Put it down. Put the phone down. You ain't winning. No. You are not winning, my friend. Do you ever get caught up on the internet like that? Like you might have had a few drinks. You're watching fights. You tweet something and then somebody tweets back that you can't ignore. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody with a blue check mark or something. Um, just once. Oh, you and Adam encouraged me to tweet something after I had had a couple of drinks. Oh, what did we? I'll you? never forget it. Bad Can- influence. No, you were like, no, that's a good one. That makes sense. Ooh, what was it? I don't remember. It was with um, uh, Stamen. I was. He was like, he was gassing out, and I was actually pulling. I like picked him to win this fight. This is years and years and years ago, mm. and I said. Something about, oh, damn, stamina, stamina, something like that. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's a good one. I was like, okay, I'm going to tweet it. Then somebody, like, added him. And I was like, no, I'm actually a fan of this. God damn it. Did, uh, Did he see it? Oh, yeah, he saw it. What did he say? Did he tweet it back? Well, one of his, no, one of his fans talked shit, and then he laughed at it. Oh, okay. And I was like, it was a joke. Oh, I'm was, sorry. I was winning. I thought I was, I was going to win. <laughs> I was like, fine. Did it's he lose the me. fight? He lost. Oh, well, yeah. Then yeah. you kind of feel bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dang learned, it. Learn not to do that again. Yeah. Sorry. We're bad influences. No, I usually I usually have like a moment where I'm like, I, I got time right now. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And then I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> no, you don't have time. Because you got to wake precious. up and deal with that. My energy is precious, and I would rather focus it on other things. There are so many times when I'm watching fights, and I know I had my phone out, and then I wake up from that, you know, from that drunken slumber. Uh-huh. <laughs> like to notifications. Wait, what? Did, how did I get home? <laughs> Where's my phone? Oh, shit. What did I do? You know, you have that anxiety when you wake up like, what did I do? I can't live like that. Oh, it's it's something that you learn to stop doing eventually. Hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> But I hate that feeling when you wake up and you're like, ooh, I know I was talking some shit. Usually I'll look at my phone and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm I'm good. Just a story I have to delete, that's all. (laughs) (laughs) Everything else is fine. But yeah, every now and then I'm like, shouldn't have said that. (laughs) (laughs) Whoops, got hacked. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Um, man. Do you know whose page looks like they got freaking hacked? Who? It's on this judo page that I follow, and it usually has, like, really good judo technique. I follow, like, a judo sambo, like, you know, just stuff for, like, techniques. And this judo page 
is posting like a bunch of chicks fighting in bikinis and lingerie. Oh, that's a lot the of one. like a lot of like scantily clad weigh ins, just like a lot of really weird stuff. I'm like, did you guys get hacked? That's it's so like strange. it's a blue check mark uh, page. It has like almost five hundred thousand followers, what? and they're posting some weird shit. That's crazy. There was like a very very large woman fighting a very skinny woman in fishnets. Okay, is and that the video that you sent me? Yes. Okay, hold up. Let me go back to these videos. No, it is really, I send you a lot of videos. I know. <laughs> I'll find it eventually. <laughs> I'll find it eventually. I remember seeing it and going, wait a second. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's a weird thing that's happening. I swear they got hacked. And it it's also crazy to me because I'm seeing more and more of these kinds of videos that are reminding me of like, the old days like the dark days of mma like yeah. the stuff is coming back into like popularity for some reason and i feel like we should really be past it yeah for sure okay here's the fight it's on um 067 0607 n-i-v-a-a oh no there's another one maybe they changed their maybe they get did get hacked because it says azerbaijan low cars page no, there's another one. Hold on. I feel like this page got hacked. <laughs> it might have. <laughs> like, why is this car page showing bikini fights? So, yeah, this fight is crazy. There's a huge, maybe three, 400-pound woman fighting a girl in fishnets in, um, in underwear. And now she's... On bottom, <laughs> probably about to pass out from being crushed. Yeah, it is. That's really odd. It's insane. And uh, it's it's best underscore judo underscore page. Okay. And this one, they're showing like weird weigh-ins. They're just showing like weird stuff, like stuff that is not even judo. Oh, and a bunch of stuff got deleted. That's weird. Oh, now that I'm talking about it, maybe they did get hacked. Maybe they get did get hacked. So that happens a lot. Uh, there was one time where I Guys, had... Guys, double authentication on your pages. Seriously, yes. you don't want to deal with that. There was one time um, where we had a, a, a store page. Like, we had, like, this little store we were trying to do where we had a bunch of... Um, we had a bunch of, like, Muay Thai shorts and fight equipment and stuff. And that page got hacked. And I don't even remember what they were showing, but it was just a bunch of characters that I didn't understand, like either Thai or some kind of like Asian country characters on it. And we had no idea how that happened. So yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. But these fights are happening right now. They right? are happening. These are current. Being, these are current. Like there's uh, a big guy fighting two women. There's mm. like um, tag team stuff going. I think a lot of it is like maybe Russian type. Like Eastern European countries. Huh. Interesting. It's it's really strange that this stuff is happening because I remember when I was coming up, I had only been fighting like maybe a year or two and I would get like weird messages on MySpace asking me if I would fight in a bikini, uh. um, if I fight in lingerie, if, like just weird stuff. So when, when I see some of the, you know, the antics <laughs> Uh, happening it just like it kind of makes me just feel like we should be past this stuff like maybe this stuff should be like the things that we talk about in the archives not things that are on trend that's it's, what happens nowadays so it's like, like um, there's I, so much coming back into style i think that's why i have kind of an issue with like the the influencers the youtubers like doing these weird boxing fights mm. um it's just it, it doesn't evolve the sport. It's it's entertainment, and I understand people find it entertaining, but it doesn't. It's it's not helping. Yeah, <laughs> it's not helping us uh, progress as as a sport to be taken seriously. Yeah, well, I think we're getting to that point where you're gonna see bastardizations of the legitimate sport now because it's gotten because so it's big, so popular. It's so popular. Yeah, so I should take it as a compliment. You should take it as a sign that. We made it. We made it. We're on top. We're a real sport. And now you're going to get lingerie football league because of how big it is. 
the <laughs> why can't we have something cool like the what what are they called the savannah bananas what is that like uh it's um this baseball team and they fight another baseball team and they do like dancing and oh. they do like uh like the pitchers on stilts and it's really cute and it's family fun friendly and it's a really cool kind of like take on baseball. Uh-huh. It's almost like the um and one guys are like, you know, playing basketball. Like Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, like that. Yeah. It's almost like that. Okay. Uh but why can't we get that? <laughs> I'm sure that's out there too. Why is it so dark. I'm sure that's out there too. It's just not on your weird hacked judo page. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it, it. I don't know. I, I think I don't think it's a huge deal, but it is funny that that's the kind of thing that I don't know. Maybe that's the only way you get Russians to watch female fights when they're in bikinis or they're fighting men. I. <laughs> my brain is not. Making that connect for some reason. What do you mean? Because I thought I thought that they would prefer women not to be like around the cage at all. Remember Which that is one? Odd. Yeah. Remember that one Russian fighter who kicked one of the ring girls? Oh no! You never saw that video? No. Oh, I do you remember even. the fighter? No. It w- it was on a low level show. Oh okay. It was on like a local circuit. Why did he do that? Was it Shara? I bet it was Shara. <laughs> it was not, but maybe it was one of his friends that jumped the other couple. Probably. Uh, yeah, it was just it was just kind of weird. Like they didn't want he didn't want a ring girl. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm him. saying. It's a weird juxtaposition where if those videos are some kind of Russian promotion, is this? It's not an all female crowd. Like <laughs> this is the thing that you have to do in order to get them to sit down and watch a fight. They're not all in the maybe. bathroom. Maybe. <laughs> They're not in the bathroom. They're not getting snacks. They're watching a man beat up two women. <laughs> I guess. Oh, man. Let's see. Kicks a uh, ring card girl. I want to see that. <laughs> well, I thought it, it was, was very rude. It was very rude. Yeah, he was like, get out of here. Oh, yeah. You find it? Yeah. Uh, MMA fighter gets lifetime ban after kicking ring card girl on the butt. Yep. Ah, oh, man. Let's I see. hope there's only one of them. <laughs> it had to have been one. Let's see. Let's zoom to when it happened. Ah, some talking head video. Mm. Right, get out of here, guy. I just want to see the video. I mean, we don't care about you. We don't, you you're funny looking anyway. <laughs> okay, you well, got a face it for radio. It happened anyway. Um, and I'm not sure who it was, but yep, it's a thing. <laughs> Yeah, well, hopefully we'll get past that part, too, people being very uh, insensitive to the struggle of being a female fighter. Mm. But speaking of that, uh, that. hot topic alert, hot topic alert. So when I first heard about this uh, Olympic boxing thing, I was livid, livid. Like, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. And the Olympics is such a... Toilet show is, is were my immediate reactions. And then I looked into it, and it seems like they gave those boxers a test that they wouldn't give us in the UFC. Like, it's a DNA test. And we we get blood tests, um, but I've never heard of uh, people doing blood tests in order to see what chromosomes you have. A gender test. A gender test. Like, we've never gotten gender tests in the UFC. I don't think any athlete has, um, unless it was a hot topic, you know, unless yeah. people are like, that's a man. But if you look at the UFC roster, there's a lot of people who look just as masculine as especially the um, the one that's really been making headlines, the Al- Algerian woman uh-huh. um, who looked just as masculine as her. And there there's no question about whether they are female or not. So I thought it was pretty wild that uh, there was a huge um, just uproar from something that didn't seem like an issue. But, yeah, I don't know. What what do you feel about it? So they were previously banned from participating in, I think it was the boxing. Mm -hmm. Um, So they were banned because they showed up as having an XY chromosome. 
mm-hmm. meaning that they were born male. It could have, uh, I watched one video that said it could have been that they were hermaphrodites, which is very, very rare. Mm-hmm. And that could explain why they were born with XY. But either way, they didn't um, pass a test that said that they were biological women. Mm. And now in the Olympics in Paris, they're now able to compete. And the Algerian is winning um, and doing well and put away an Italian boxer in under a minute. And she goes on record saying that she's never felt such hard punches. She couldn't take it anymore. And she was, she was devastated. Mm -hmm. And so there's, um, there's a lot of uproar. There's a lot of disapproval. There's a lot of anger and frustration that these people who were not born natural women are competing in a woman's sport. Yeah. So there's also a genetic condition where you do have the XY chromosome, even if you're born a woman and there's no gender reassignment or anything. You were born a woman, you have female reproductive organs. Like there's no question that you've been a woman your entire life until you take this test. And I feel like that's what happened. And it just makes me think like there's so many women who perform well, who look masculine in the UFC, in any sport, if you were to do this gender test to the entire roster, you'd probably get some random anomalies like that back. Mm -hmm. But if you're born a woman, you have female reproductive organs, this is probably the first time you're hearing about this thing that you have. Mm Mm-hmm. So I think that's well. The it's not the first time that they've heard it because they were banned previously. Well, they were banned, but they were allowed to fight in this thing because I guess they don't do that test. Or could it have been? Did it have something to do with testosterone levels? Because I'm, there was that. Was she a track athlete? There was previously an Olympian who was not able to compete because her testosterone levels were so high, but it was Mm. naturally high. She wasn't doping. She wasn't a man. She just had very high testosterone levels. But Mm. it's not something like this, I don't think. Um, I think it's just the genetic test, Mm -hmm. like the test to see what chromosomes you have. And it's just a, it's, it's a really strange one because it is a test that most female athletes don't get. No one's asking the question of, oh, do you have a vagina? Mm-hmm. And, like, usually it'll come out if you don't, you know. Like, when we get our test done, we have to pee in front of USADA or the whoever's uh, doing the drug testing, not USADA, new USADA. Um, you can, like, a doctor is going to write down if you had gender reassignment when you do your physical. It's really hard to fake that. So I feel like um, this test simply brought up an anomaly that these women had that has nothing to do with them being male. Like, there is no, neither of the women are trans So I think that's the misconception that a lot of people thought. And that's what I thought when I first heard about it. And that's still the line on people who are really against them competing. They're like, these are trans fighters. Where this girl comes from, you're not allowed to be gay. You're not allowed to have gender reassignment or be trans. So it's, it would be remarkable if she were able to change her gender from male to female and compete being from Algeria Mm -hmm. like they it's illegal if you're gay but it's not it's not um what's the word it like it there's still a possibility that this could have happened that because she has xy or that she got gender reassignment you never know if where there's a will there's a way people could figure out a way so just to be in a same-sex marriage or just to be in a same-sex relationship, if somebody finds out, you go to jail for... She could go somewhere else, though. Yeah, but she's uh, she's never left the country, aside from the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So it it's really, it's really, like, hard to believe that this poor boxer from Algeria is going to go through those lengths to become a woman and compete in the Olympics. Maybe. I think I think it's more likely that it's the anomaly that people are talking about where someone is born. I mean, they're 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 posting like baby pictures and everything. She was born a woman. She went through the process of becoming a boxer. She's not 
a great boxer. Like, she's not an unstoppable boxer, rather. She's been beaten before. She's getting better, and that's why she's getting attention. Mm -hmm. Because of this failed test or because of uh, the XY chromosome and because she is doing well now. Mm -hmm. And so that's the only uh, case that I actually, like, looked into a bit because that was the one where people were like, okay, I'm starting to understand what this gender test is, is not like they didn't flip them over and see, uh, you know, surgery scars and see that they actually were a man at one point. The gender test was simply a blood test that showed that they had this XY chromosome. Whether it means they had more testosterone or not, I'm not sure, but it's something that can happen in people who were born female. Mm -hmm. And it's not a test that we get in the UFC. I mean, you could look at every top five in the female divisions and be like, she got X, Y. <laughs> <laughs> I think she got X, Y too. <laughs> like half the people I fought probably got X, Y. If you're going off of looks, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going off a of jawline, bicep size, bone density, uh, uh, was Adam's apple. Like there, there are a lot of people who, if you're just showing the picture and you're trying to fear monger and say, this is a man, there are a lot of women who are going to fall into that category. So that's why it kind of, uh, made, made me wary to just jump on the bandwagon of being angry about it because it did come out that this, at least the Alg Algerian woman was born a woman with X, Y, with X, Y, Whatever that means. To me, that means X, Y is what males have. So maybe they had both. The only thing that makes sense to me without knowing a lot is it could potentially be someone, because they say that we're both born with, some people are born with both. Mm -hmm. And then you can choose. Mm -hmm. So could that be possible? I feel like in a place like that, you'd probably want to sign, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is like Maybe. Algeria, the you thing know, that North out Africa. To me is it's they were born with X Y, so to me that means that they were born a male. And I don't, I don't know anything more other than like I don't know the other possibilities. I don't know what else that could mean. Just science says males are born with X Y, women are born with X X. Yeah, but then there's also things that happen within science that are inex inexplicable. Mm -hmm. um, I could get a rash and go to the doctor and they're like, oh, I'll put this on it. <laughs> and it just goes away <laughs> if I don't put anything on it. You know, like a lot of, a lot, like this thing coming out feels a lot like fear mong mongering and mm -hmm. less like an actual issue where people need to be outraged by it because it isn't a situation where we've had to deal in the past where someone is, you know, going through puberty, they're getting sex changes or getting sex changes before puberty and then coming out and competing against women, like, that's a totally different issue. Mm -hmm. And people are conflating the two. They're thinking that this person went out, got a sex change, so they, she could dominate females as a male. Mm -hmm. And that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, And I'm pissed because that's what I thought happened. Mm -hmm. And that's the power of just like that fear mongering in media, it'll blow up an issue that is going to get attention because it's such a hot topic right now, despite how infrequent it actually happens. Well, so it's happened go. twice, which is crazy yeah. because they're saying that the other boxer had a similar thing. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy that this happened twice in boxing in the same time frame it, it's kind of crazy so the videos that I watched from you know the news the articles that I read it all said not that she was trans but it did say that she was a natural male mm -hmm. so I definitely need more information yeah but it it is crazy that these that this has happened twice in in the same kind of context and then what does that mean to be a natural male if you're born female like if you're born with female organs, mm -hmm. like that's it's a really strange term to put on something where it means something totally different. Mm -hmm. So the like that's what I mean by the whole like people are trying to act like they're scientists and they're mm -hmm. trying to act like this thing is the only reason why the Italian girl lost when you can look at the match and. 
she just got punched and gave up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it's it. People get so excited to go, oh, that poor girl. When, like, I swear, like, if if this gender test is a thing, we should test all the UFC athletes. <laughs> like, we should test every one of them because I guarantee that you're gonna have a bunch test and have xy chromosomes if it's based off of looks if it's based off of how much testosterone remember courtney casey had a testosterone uh failure after a fight just because she was on birth control like Mm -hmm. there's so many anomalies that happen with makeups that if you're trying to find something you'll find it even if it it's a non-story even if this person has been a woman from birth you're gonna find something in their genetics because we're all so different so that's what I think is happening here. It's like a rare genetic condition. But if you're looking at athletes and if you're looking at something that goes together, like, hey, maybe there's going to be more women who are athletic having XY chromosomes because maybe they have higher testosterone levels. Maybe they're more athletic because of it. Maybe they have more things that men have. You know what I mean? I think that you're going to find more similarities in a certain test group just because of what they're doing and where they fit in in the world. I do wonder why the test was done in the first place, and I do wonder how common it is within the Olympics. Mm-hmm. I would like to know that, and I would like to know exactly what it means. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot that we don't know that was just kind of put out there, and then people ran with it. Mm-hmm. And like the first thing I asked once I actually started asking questions was like, wait, what's a gender test? Like, <laughs> like did they flip her over? Did they be like, oh, it's a girl, you know, like what, what exactly is a gender test? And then it's like, oh, it's a DNA test. Okay. Is it possible for someone to be born a woman and have the XY chromosome? And it's like, yes, mm-hmm. it's rare, but it, but it happens. And when you're looking at rare and, uh, in a worldwide, like, you know, testing pool is going to be a lot more than you think, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, it's just one of those weird things where, yeah, we don't really know shit about it. And yet everyone's mad and they're well, all interpret interpreting it in a different way. Sure. And I mean, I understand why it raised a lot of alarms and I appreciate that they're wanting to protect women in sport. Yeah. Because there there have been a lot of instances where natural males are coming into a sport combat or other and they're blowing naturally born women out of the water. And I think it's important Actual to natural males, not what? F- actual natural males, not females with X Y chromosomes. No, I think I said natural women. No? Oh, you said both. Natural okay. males and natural women. Um, I think that I appreciate the fact that people are coming up in arms because they want to protect women in sport mm. and they want to make sure it's a fair playing field. So I, I can appreciate that it's a sensitive topic, but yeah, we need more information. Yeah. It just, it feels horrible to, uh, put this, uh, put this woman on just on blast and put out her, you know, personal information when it doesn't seem like she did anything wrong Mm -hmm. like she's competing and she's been a woman since she was born and like it just it just seems like a lot of uh you know uh pitchforks and yelling and stuff at someone an athlete who doesn't deserve it they simply got better and then made headlines because of that Mm -hmm. yeah so that was a weird one because for sure, when I first heard about it, I was like, the fuck? <laughs> like, like, how? How did this happen? How would you allow this to happen? Yeah. It was you, just the way that it was framed, the reactions that it was getting, it, make, it made me think that it was a totally different mm-hmm. thing, which, and I'm totally against, um, you know, people uh, having sex changes and competing against women. I don't think that's fair. I think genetically, once you hit puberty, you are not the same. Like you can see little girls compete with little boys and you can see them be pretty competitive. But then once that puberty hits, then the body changes and they're much more of a threat to a girl in, in competition. Like we always joke about being able to beat up guys and training, but 
I don't want to fight the best 115er male. No, no, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm going to beat up the guy whose first week is in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I might use him as a restaurant, maybe tell him what he's doing wrong, how to fix his jab. But, you know, I'm not trying to have a title fight against the, the intergender champion, you know, and uh, it's really unfair, I feel like. And I think the more people research it, the more they're going to come out. Like, remember when uh, when Fallon Fox was a thing and there wasn't enough research to prove that this is bad. Well, there was enough evidence from the results in the fights to show that it was unfair until yeah. Ashley Evans Smith beat her. Yeah, until she beat her. But even she said that it was, it was different. unfair. Yeah. <laughs> she was beating up on the guy who wasn't that good in the yeah. gym, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, it, it's like you could you could imagine that someone with that background would have an unfair advantage against a woman and it proves so so there's uh there's a lot of uh people fighting both sides on that one but i think that one's a lot more clear you have a lot more people saying nah that's fucked up yeah yeah so this wasn't that situation so i i just thought it was interesting that that came out and and i'm wondering what's going to happen with uh with those athletes in the future, if, if they're going to get their name cleared or if they're going to do gender tests more often with uh, all female sports, because I think you might see that a lot more often if, if they did do that. It's possible for sure. Yeah. Um, and then we can have I, some fight news. Can I, can I share? Yes. Fight you news? guys had to sit through our uh, political debate. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> but now you're getting rewarded with some sweet, sweet news. So you're the first to hear that I will be fighting October 19th against Elise Reed Ooh! at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. Yes. You should invite Mark Zuckerberg. Totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Her twin. <laughs> <laughs> no, how dare you? How dare you? Have you seen them in the no. same room at once? I bet uh. you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you haven't. No, I mean, she's a sweet girl. This is why people call me mean. <laughs> this is why. Damn. Now I got to take a deep look at myself. I'm sorry, Elise. But no, this should be a good fight. She is, uh, she's definitely a strong competitor. You know, uh, she she has uh, a few little tricks up her sleeve. She has a fast overhand. Um, but she ain't no match for my girl, Jess. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be fun. When is it again? It's October 19th at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. Nice. Um, this is my first fight back after, you know, a very long injury <laughs> yeah uh, so foot been, broke yeah no and then, more and then rebroke and then yeah. fixed <laughs> foot fine <laughs> finally yeah finally foot fine yeah this is the last time i trained heal naturally oh that was, that was stupid mm. but i mean i feel like it was a hard reset i feel like it gave me a lot of time to rest my my body my head mm. um you know all things happen for me and you know my my best benefit so that's what I'm sticking to and I feel you know it's been it's been tough getting back in the gym and you know shaking off the ring rust I do believe that ring rust exists oh <laughs> it does but it doesn't mean that you know it can stop you or or you know hinder you in in the ways that a lot of people say that it can but um it's definitely been challenging getting back into the gym especially with you know people that have been you know, training and fighting consistently. And so it's been a really steep learning curve, but I am really appreciative of it because it made me, you know, get back into it that much faster. Yeah. And it drove me to, you know, look at myself and correct a lot of things that I need to. So I'm excited. I have a lot of good feedback, a lot of good um, ideas and of what I want to do in this fight and the fighter that I'm trying to reinvent bent myself to be so mm. i'm really excited and it's nice when you get a nice long uh camp when you're coming back to oh yeah i wasn't gonna jump right into <laughs> we're not doing that no sometimes <laughs> even even seven weeks can feel a little short for when sure it's been a long layoff yeah. but having that name and being able to you know look at it think about it a little bit and then put it away 
look at it again, reassess how training's been going, put it away. Just having that time to slowly wrap your head around fighting this person, what you want to do against that person after a long layoff, that's always nice. Yeah. I and think she had a long layoff too, right? She did too. I think she fought right around the same time that I did last. Okay. So I'm not sure if she was injured or maybe she took some time off to train and focus and kind of, you know, work on some things. So I'm I'm not exactly sure, but it looks like we are both going to come to the octagon with some surprises. Oh, she uh, last fought your girl Lupita Godinez oh. and lost to a rear naked choke in round two. Gotcha. Yeah, and that was in uh, uh, September of 2023. So yeah, about the same amount of time, a few months in between, yeah. but about the same layoff. I'm wondering what happened to her too, why she took such a long time to get back at it. But, you know, a fight like that too, when... when um, you're just trying to get back into the groove and get back to believing in your abilities. Sometimes it's nice to take some time off, step away from it, miss it a bit, and then come back strong. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, for, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he has done yet. <laughs> but just like, when are we going to the beach? <laughs> you need to take me to the beach again, Jess. I'm sorry, we'll wrap this up. <laughs> uh, um, I think that for me, you know, getting back into training has, has been nice, but I definitely need a goal. I need an objective. I need something that gives me structure and gets me more regimented. Um, that's when I think I'm at my best. Nice. Otherwise, I just have too much room to fuck off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll just do a little gi -ji jitsu here. I'll just like, you know. Maybe one class here. And it doesn't <laughs> matter. I'm tired. I'm not going to go to class today. Um, no. I'm just going to wake up late. Drink some wine. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I'm already looking forward to my first bender after my fight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't get a bender. Sorry. I want to get fucked up. Yeah, I got I, I have uh, some drinks that I was supposed to get after Jenna's fight that's going to have to roll over into after my fight. So mm -hmm. probably going to get pretty messed up. And then that will be enough time that you can have a few drinks with me, too. Yes. I think you'll still have a good amount of weeks before your fight. So. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I'm already, I'm already little. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't fat camp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it'll be easy. <laughs> easy ease back into it. Well, nice. I can't wait for that. Before that, we have my fight on August 24th. 24th. Yeah. <laughs> Against uh, Baby Shark, Tabitha Ricci. And then, um, yeah, should be a fun week or a fun end of the year. Yeah. For for our people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anything else you want to talk about? No, I think we're good. Yeah, I think I hit all my stuff. Uh, we should break down that bikini fight, though, that you sent me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally just talking about how I wanted to start a fight league one day and maybe make it A bikini female. fight league. A bikini fight league would maybe work. That would be the one that sets you apart. Yeah. You how just many vagina flashes do you think you'll get per fight? That's what I'm saying. You just got to figure out how to get the right type of uh, material, the right cut, so you don't have too many vagina flashes. I'm sure Triller would be happy to broadcast that for they you. They would. They would love it. They would love it All right, so we much. already see how this is going to happen. We already see how it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's written in the stars all yeah. we need is jake paul's number you'll probably need <laughs> definitely like a thicker crotch like the old school brazilian yes. female valley tudo shorts i actually bought a pair when i was in brazil like decades ago Ooh. um i might still have it laying around there somewhere but uh hunter used to make these like really unflattering like bikini bottoms for females so oh. it showed like a little cheek but it was like pretty secure so it was like the like a pro wrestler type. yes Ooh, yes yes it was like that's that. what we need yeah and it was um really like no give like the venom sports bra bands okay this thing so you get sewed into it yes basically maybe have like the boxing strings at yeah. the back like yep, they yep. do for the for the groin protector yeah. yeah we can make it happen yeah. do you want to lube them up or keep it dry 
I mean, I don't think you need lube down there. <laughs> I meant like the body. Oh. I meant if we were going to, you know, go with the theme. I had no idea what you're talking about. Like, why would you lube up the underwear? <laughs> <laughs> to get them in, it's so tight. Yeah, no, I think I think it should be just a regular promotion. The only difference is you're in a bikini. Yeah, I mean, the UFC gives us a uniform. PFL gives them a uniform. So do you. And think how much more popular the girls who show a little cheek are. You so know? much more popular. Mackenzie Dern. Holly yes. Holm. Yes. Uh, who's a, uh alien, mm-hmm. you know? The little cheeks are popping. It gets the people in the seats. The boys come a knocking. Yes, they do. They see where the milkshake is. Yes. <laughs> Brings the boys to the yard. <laughs> yes, yeah, so all we need is a little less fabric and we're good. Maybe it could just be boy shorts. Boy shorts would still give the same feel. Yeah. Like the UFC ring card girl outfits. Yeah, those. that's kind of what I was picturing, too. Yeah. It's that kind of cut. Okay, I like you that. You just need it sturdy. I like that. Just need no give. I think we have something. I think we have something. Yeah. What are we going to call it? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. Something I mean, about... BFC is so easy. <laughs> but then we can never say what the B is. Mm-mm. It could be Biatch FC. But actually, it stands for a bikini. Uh huh. <laughs> it could be. Oh, I don't know. I haven't had any alcohol to Nip think about that. Slip FC. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Do I remember there was like all those? Well, I don't know if you remember, but I would always see these things online where like they it was a porno or something, but they would like pay the girls to try to get their bikini tops off. Oh. It I was like really that. messed up. It was like it was before Invicta. This is the first grappling, like female grappling I saw. With lots of scissoring. Lots of scissoring. Lots of scissoring. They're trying to take their bikini top and then the winner won. <laughs> <laughs> the winner gets to do stuff. I don't know. Maybe someone else has seen it in the comments. They can see what happened. Angela. I know. You better delete your browser history. Dude, on this your was not computer. on purpose. This is like something that sure, would just pop up when I'm just Googling. Late at night, laying in bed by yourself. I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll try out this jiu jitsu. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Forgot what? to keep the safe search up. <laughs> I just wanted a gym. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was like a common thing. Maybe I just had a lot of guy friends. So they'd be like, oh, yeah, I know that one. <laughs> forget the name of it. Oh, for sure they knew that one. I forget the name of it, but uh, it like was a lot bookmarked. Yeah, a lot of my guy friends knew about it. I was like, oh, okay, I guess it's common knowledge. <laughs> Damn. All right. Well, yeah, I'll go clear that history real quick, and <laughs> <laughs> I think we can end on this note. This has been another Tuesdays. You're welcome. Sorry. <laughs>